Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I want to finish off Zimsake Maths Paper 2, June 2013. Uh, so we are going to start with number 10. It was a question on menstruation. We are given a diagram. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H is a rectangular block of wood 25 centimeters long. So this is the 25 centimeter and 10 centimeters wide. This is the 10 centimeter and 8 centimeters high. This is the height of that rectangular block. The block is sewn along the plane W, X, Y, Z to form a wedge W, B, X, Y, C, Z. On part A, we want to calculate the area of the plane W, X, Y, Z. So we want to calculate the area of this shaded region. So since we have uh, 10 centimeters here, we also have 10 centimeters here because they are parallel. And also uh, ZW is going to be 10 centimeters which I have labeled here. And we have four centimeters on our BX. So it means CY is also four centimeters since they are parallel. But to get the area, we need this length. So we are going to apply Pythagoras theorem since ZCY is a right angled triangle. So um, since we have four centimeters here and 10 centimeters here, um, we are going to say ZY is our hype. So we say hype squared is equal to CZ squared plus CY squared. CY is 4 centimeters and to square it, CZ is 10 centimeters and we square it. Uh, therefore, ZY is equal to square root of 4 squared is 16 plus 10 squared is 100. 100 plus 16 is uh, 116. So this is the length ZY. So we now need to find the area. We are going to say length times width. Our length is root of 116 times our width, which is this width, 10 centimeters. So let's punch this on the calculator. Root 116 times 10 is equals to 107.70. We round it to three significant figures. It is going to be 108 square centimeters. This is our answer for part A. Let's move on to part B. In part B, we want to find the area of triangle ZCY. So area of triangle is half base times height. So our base is CZ, which is equals to 10 centimeters. And our height is CY, which is equals to 4 centimeters. 2 into 2, 1. 2 into 4, 2. 10 times 2 is equals to 20 cubic centimeters. That is all about part B. Let's move on to part C. So in part C, we want to find the angle CZY. So it is this angle that we want to calculate. So we are going to use um, that formula, which is Chasho Tau. Let's say we take this cha. We are going to say cos Z is equals to adjacent over hype. So this is our cos set 
the adjacent is this ten, and the height is this root of 116. So to get angle Z, we are going to say cos inverse this ten over root of 116. Let's punch it on the calculator. Second function calls bracket 10 divided by root of 116. Uh, we get 21.8. The degree of accuracy is not specified. So we are going to, to round to the nearest degree. It is going to be 22 degrees. And then, let's say we apply show, uh, we are going to say sine z is equals to opposite over hype. We have this sine z, we have this z angle, the opposite is this 4 centimeters. So we are going to say 4 over hype, which is root of 116. So to get angle Z, we're going to say sine inverse 4 over one, uh, root of 116. Let's punch this on the calculator. Second function, sine 4 divided by root of 116. We get 21.8 again. So we are going to round it to the nearest degree, it is going to be 22 degrees. Or we use uh, this tower, we are going to say tan z is equals to opposite over adjacent. So the opposite of angle z is 4 centimeters and the adjacent is 10 centimeters so to get Z, we are going to say tan inverse 4 over 10. So second function, tan 4 divided by 10 is equals again to 21.8. And we round it to the nearest degree. It is going to be 22 degrees. So we, you can use N of this Chasho Tower to get angle C, Z, Y, since it is a right-angled triangle. Let's move on to part D. We want to find the surface area of the wedge. So a rectangular block has six faces. So we are going to say the area of this face times two the area of this face times two, and the area of this face times two. So um, the first face we are going to take is 25 times 10, and we multiply it by two. We write 25 times 10 times two. And the second face which we are going to consider is this face for this face, we have uh, uh, 10 centimeters and 8 centimeters. Um, so we are going to write 10 times 8 times 2. And the last two faces are um, for this face, which is 25 uh, length and width of 8 centimeters. So we write 25 times 8 times 2. So 25 times 10 is 250. 250 times 2, we get 500. And then we say 10 times 8, we get 80. And we say 80 times 2, we get 160. And then 25 times 8 is equals to 400. 
uh, is equals to 200. We say 200 times 2, we get 400. So if we say 500 plus 160 plus 400, we get 1060 cubic centimeter, uh, square centimeters since it is surface area. Then we move on to last question. We want to find the percentage volume of wood removed. So we need to find the volume of the cuboid. Volume of cuboid is area of cross section times height or times length. So the cross section is uh, 25 times 10 and we say 25 times 10 times 8. So 25 times 8 times 10 is equals to 2000 cubic centimeters. This is the volume of this wall cubic. Now we need to find the volume of the uh, wood removed. Volume of um, wood removed is area of cross section times height. We have find the area of uh, CZY is 20 cubic centimeter and we are going to multiply with this chain. So volume of wood is 20 times 10 which is equals to 200 cubic centimeters. Now when to find the volume or the percentage volume of wood removed, we are going to say volume of wood removed, which is 200 divided by the total volume, which is 2000 times 100. So um, these zeros cancel each other. 22.1, so we'll remain with 10% as our final answer. This was a complete solution for the menstruation problem, which was on number 10. We now need to move on to number 11. Number 11 is a question on statistics. It is reading, 100 boys watched soccer, on TV during 2010 World Cup. The information is shown in the table. Uh, so those who watch less than 15 hours, the number of boys were one, was one. Then who watched from 15 to 20, they were two. 20 to 25, they were seven going on. So one to, we are given the following is an incomplete cumulative frequency table for the distribution. Uh, we want to find the value of P and the value of Q. So to find the value of P, we are going to add the number of boys that are in the range of X is less than or equal to 4. So we are going to say uh, P is equals to 46 and we add the number of boys which are in the range of 35 to 40. These are 23. So if we say 46 plus 23, we get 69. That is going to be the value of P. And for the value of Q, we are going to say 69 plus uh, those who are from 40 to 45. So um, it's 69 plus 17 so that we get the value of 86. Uh, that was all about 11a. And then in uh, part B, uh, we are told that using a scale of 2 cm to represent 10 hours on the horizontal axis and 2 cm to represent 10 boys on the vertical axis, draw the cumulative frequency curve for the data. So you need to make sure that you follow the scale 
which, which he had told in the question. So I've drawn the X and the Y axis. In the Y axis, we have the number of boys, and in the X axis, we have the time. Um, two, two centimeters is representing 10 units in both axes. Now we now need to attempt the question. So we are going to use this uh, cumulative frequency table to draw our fr cumulative frequency graph. For those who watch uh, for less than 15, we have one. For less than 15 hours, we have one boy. So 15 is in line with this one. We draw a point here. Those who watched less than 20 hours, we have three boys. So 20 is going to be in line with three on the graph. We present like this. 20, those who watched less than 20 is in line with three boys. Those who watched less than 25 hours, they are 10. So 25 is going to be in line with 10. Let's draw that plot with let's plot that point on the graph so this is the point 25 is in line with 10 those who watched less than 30 they are 21 we are going to plot this point 30 in line with 21 those who watched um less than 35 they are 46 so 35 is going to be in line with 46 Let's draw that on the graph. So 35 is in line with 46. So this is the point which I have plotted. And uh, the next point which we are going to plot is 69 in line with 40. Let's draw that. Let's plot that point on the graph. 40 is in line with 69. And the next point point which we are going to plot is 86 and 45. So 45 and 86 is this point. The next point is 50 and 96. Let's plot that point on the graph. It is this point. And the next point which we are going to plot is 99 and 55. Finally, 100 is in line with 60. So I'm going to join these all these points use uh, by a smooth cave. That cave is going to represent the cumulative frequency distribution graph. So this is our frequency cumulative graph. It looks like this. So in part C, we want to find the number of boys who watch the soccer for 30 hours and below. Our 30 hours is here, so we are going to draw a line. And then we see that which number of boys the, does it link to. So it is linking with 20 boys. So it means that the number of boys who watched less than 30 hours, there are 20. 20 boys watched 30 hours and below. Let's move on to another question. Part 2 is requiring us to find the median number of hours spent watching soccer on TV. So median is on the center of the distribution so we have 100 boys so we are going to see um median is 50 percent of the distribution so we are going to say 50 percent of um we link it on our graph 50 percent is here we draw a line that touches the cumulative frequency curve and we see which figure does it um, align with in our time? So 50% is aligning with 36 hours. 
So it means that the median is 36 hours. The median number of hours is 36 hours. In part 3, we want to calculate the number of boys who watched soccer for more than 20 hours but not more than 45 hours. Let's use our graph to find the number of boys who watched uh, 20 hours. So we have 20 hours here and it is aligning with uh, 3. 20 hours is aligning with 3 and we want to find the 45 four, hours. Uh, let's draw a line from 45 until it touches the curve. So this is the line. So this line is aligning with um, we have uh, 80 here. So 80 uh, 45 is aligning with 78. So we are going to say 78 minus 3 to get 75. So it means the number of boys that watched between 20 and 45, they are 78. Then finally, if two boys were chosen at random from the group, find the probability that both watched soccer for 30 hours or less. So the probability that a boy watches 30 hours or less, we are going to say 11 plus 7 plus 2 plus 1 over 100. This is 21 over 100. And then we need to find again the probability that the second one is also in 30 hours or less. Since we have selected uh, the first one from the second group, from the first, from this um, first third, less than third, we now need to say the second, the probability of choosing another boy from this group, it is going to be uh, 20 over 99. This is a dependent event because when we select the first boy in the in this first category of 31 of 8 hours or less it is going to affect the probability of selecting another boy from this group so the denominator is going to be to change it is going to be 99 and also the numerator is going to be 20 so the probability of both we multiply we say 20 into 21 20 into 105 then 3 into 21 is 7 3 into 99 is 33 so 7 times 1 is equals to 7 over 33 times 5 over 165 so the probability that both watched 8 hours or less is 7 over 165. That was all about um, question number 11. Let's move on to question number 12. Number 12 is a weight problem on inequality. It is reading, a green grocer offers a price reduction to customers who buy at least 1 kg of apples and more than 1 kg of grapes. The offer is limited to a total of 5 kg. Let X represent the mass of apples and Y the mass of grapes. A. Write down three inequalities which represent the given information. For the mass of apple, we are going to use uh, X and we are told that it should be at least 1 kg. So um, we are going to say X is greater than or equal to 1. 
and then another inequality we are told that um the the offer is give a, a green grocer offers a price reduction to customers who buy more than 1 kg of grapes so we are going to say y is greater than 1 the offer is limited to a total of 5 kg so um, we are saying x plus y should be less than or equal to 5 so these three inequality um, are representing this information that we are given now we want to move on to part b uh, we have the point x y which represent x kg of apples and y kg of grapes using a scale of two centimeters to represent one kg on both axes construct and indicate clearly by shading the unwanted regions the region in which x y must lie so first of all let's draw the x and y axis so i've drawn the x and y axis in the y axis we have mass of grapes and in the x axis we have mass of apples we want to represent those inequalities which we have written the first inequality which we want to present on the graph is x is greater than or equal to 1. So we first need to draw the line which is x is equals to 1. This is the line. Since we are given that it is greater than or equal, it is going to be a bold line. So we draw our line which is x is equals to 1. After drawing this line, we label it, we say x is equals to 1. And we are told that x is greater than or equal to 1. So it means that the wanted region is the region which is greater than 1. So we want this region. We don't want this region. We are going to shade this region out. This is unwanted. So we shade it out. let's move on to we want to draw y is greater than one we first need to draw the line which we name y is equals to one this is the line so so for this one um it is not going to be bold because we are just given that it is the uh, less than one so we draw a broken line it should be a broken line here and then y is greater than one so it means we want this region which is greater than one we don't want this region which is less than one so we are going to shade it out Don't forget to label this line. It is y is equals to 1. And now we, now we want to represent x plus y is less than or equal to 5. To solve this question, we need to have a table of values. So um, let's say our x is 1. What is going to be our y? This one is going to shift to the right side of the equation. So we have when x is equals to 1, our y is equals to 4. And then when our x is equals to 0, our y is going to be equals to 5. Um, when x is equals to, to 2, our y is going to be equals to 3. Let's just plot the line x plus y is equals to 5 using these coordinates. So when x is equals to 0, y is equals to 5. When x is equals to 1, y is equals to 4. When x is equals to 2, y is equals to 3. We are going to join these points 
and we are told that it is less than or equal so it is going to be a bold line so let's let us join these points we are going to have this line and we need to label it it is x plus y is equals to 5 this is the name of this line and we are told that x plus y is less than or equals to 5 so it means we want this region and we don't want this region so we are going to shade the upper region out like this we don't want this region so we are going to shade it out like this so it means this is our wanted region we label it so this is how we represent the three inequalities which we are given part c is reading if the profit on apples is 40 cents per kg and that on grapes is 50 55 cents per kg find the combination which gives the shop its greatest profit so what we need to do is we try all the corner points of the wanted region uh we have this point this point it is a combination that you have one apple and four grapes four kg of grapes We also have this combination. This combination is uh, one kg of apple and one kg of grapes. We also have this combination. This combination it has uh, four kgs of apple and. 1 kg of grapes right so um, we are told that uh if the profit on apple is 40 cents per kg so we are going to say 40 cents times 1 kg of apple plus uh, on grape it is the uh, form 55 cents times 4 and then for this combination we say 1 times 1 times 40 and here we say 1 times 55 cents and this combination we say 4 times um, 40 cents plus 1 times 55 cents let's punch this on the calculator 40 cents times 1, we get 40 cents plus 50 cents, 55 cents times 4 kg. So it's 40 plus 55 times 4 kg. We get $2.60 for this combination. And for this combination, we say uh one times four cents plus fifty five cents we get ninety five cents and for this combination we are saying four times forty which is um, which is the dollar sixty plus fifty five we are getting two dollars fifteen so we can see that this combination which have one apple and four one kg of apple and four kgs of grapes it is giving us our greatest profit so we are going to write part c the combination is of one apple one kg of apples and um four kgs of grapes then on part d calculate the maximum profit 
the maximum profit is two dollars a kist. Thank you so much, guys, for following me on this channel. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share my videos.